Welcome back to the channel. Now, today we want to continue from where we stopped. All right. Um, in the last video, we saw how we can, you know, create our own runner and then use that to run our job instead of depending on the GitLab shared runner. Now, in today's video, I want us to take a look at, all right, you know, something around the runner as well. Now, if I go here to my runner, which is right here, all right, now, when we installed the runner, we actually installed it, all right, as, you know, using the shell executor, which means we could run some shell commands, all right, on our runner, okay? But then, but then if we want to run, say, a Docker, all right, container, for example, if I want to use my runner to build Docker images, right, how do I go about that? Now, if you want to turn your runner, all right, into, all right, or basically you want your runner to use a Docker executor, that would allow you to build Docker images, that would allow you to, you know, push Docker images into, you know, Docker repositories, then you must have Docker installed, all right, on that runner. And not just have Docker installed on the runner, you must also configure, all right, your executor to basically use Docker, all right, as its executor instead of using Shell as the executor. So basically, what you want to look at in today's video is how can I configure my runner to use Docker, all right, instead of just the shell um, executor? Because, I mean, sometimes you have jobs that you want to build, and then each of the stages, all right, or each of the jobs will require maybe a particular Docker image in order for it to be built or to be tested or something like that, all right? Now, using a shell executor might limit you as to, you know, the kind of images and all of that that you can use, because, I mean, you need a Docker executor to be able to pull Docker images and use that, all right, in your job. So, in today's video, let's go ahead and see, all right, how you can, okay, change your executor from shell, all right, to Docker, and, of course, we're going to start with installing Docker on our machine uh, before we are able to do that. Now, if you go to the documentation here, of course, this tells you um, how to install Docker on your system. All right, if you follow all of these, you can go through it and then install Docker. But of course, we've been able to put that into a shell script, right? So here, I'm going to be using this shell script, which is basically just, you know, copying out all of these instruction right here and then putting that in a script that would allow me to install Docker, all right, more quickly than, you know, copying them one by one. Okay, so here I'm just basically going to use the shell script. So I'm going to copy the script, all right, and I'm going to go to my server and I'm going to create a file. So I'm going to call this docker, all right, of sh, okay, and then I'm going to open that up, all right, and then I'm going to drop my script right here, okay, and then let me save that. And of course, before you can execute a shell script, it has to be executable, all right, so I'm going to do that using the ch mod. Okay, and then now I'm going to execute that script basically to install Docker, all right, on my system. Sorry, that was a mistake. So .sh, right? So now this is going to install Docker on this machine, and that would allow us to be able to use, all right, the Docker executor. So let's wait for this to wrap up. It shouldn't take too much time. And in addition to, all right, installing Docker, the script is also going to install Docker Compose, all right, as well. Because as we go on in the course of the class, we're also going to be doing some things, all right, with Docker Compose um, as well also, okay? So this is going to install Docker Compose, it's going to install the Docker engine, all right, and then, you know, anything that relates, all right, with the Docker, basically, okay? So let's allow this to run, and then let's see how we can configure, all right, our executor, basically, you know, to use Docker instead of the shared executor that is being used at the moment, okay? All right. Now, that has been installed, so let me clear my screen here. Now, here, if I, um, you know, basically just do sudo, all right, systemctl, all right, status, and then I check my Docker status, I can see that my Docker status has been started and it is active and it's running. Okay, that's good. Now, how do you change your executor, right? How do you change your configuration, all right, from using shell, okay, to using Docker executor? So, basically... We're going to go into sudo and going to say vi etc slash gitlab runner in the last class we talked about the fact that your uh you know your runner configuration file is actually at this location with the name config.toml right and then you open that up okay so now this is my configuration file basically what you know controls uh you know how my docker uh you know how my you know gitlab runner executes all right the commands and of course builds our job basically so here 
I'm going to have to edit, you know, these things. So under the executor here, I'm going to change these, all right, from shell, and then I'm going to change that, all right, to Docker, okay? Now I'm changing that from, you know, shell, I'm changing that to Docker. So right here, let's scroll a bit down again. All right, let's scroll a bit down. Um, let's see how, all right, can be done. All right, now it looks as if we don't have anything else, all right, configured right here. Okay, so that means we may not be able to use, all right, this. So what do we do? All right, you know, how can we maybe reconfigure, all right, uh, you know, basically a runner, all right, to use the Docker executor instead of the shell, all right, executor. So let's see how we can do that. So let's quit out of here first. Oh, sorry. All right, so let's control Q and then you have your this. Okay, so let's quit out. Now, what can we do here? So we can say GitLab. All right, I fin runner. All right, and then let's look for some help here. Now, let's see. Now, for this help, let's see what we can do. All right, to basically, you know, change that status. Okay, from shell. All right, to Docker. Okay, so now we have the register new runner. All right, we have, you know, run multi runner services. All right, we are verify, and then we have a lot of other options right here. So let's see how we can do, all right, all of these, how we can change, all right, the Arona um, executor, basically, okay? Now we can unregister, okay, first of all. So let's try that. So I'm going to say GitLab, um, GitLab, I think, Arona. So we're going to run that with sudo, okay? So sudo GitLab, I think, Arona, and then let's unregister, okay? All right. So let's see what we have. Okay, so your system is running, invalid memory address. Okay, so how do we go about this? All right, now, basically this is giving us an error. So let's see, um, sudo, all right, system CTL. Okay, so let's stop the GitLab runner process, first of all. All right, and then let's try that again and see if that would give us, you know, anything that suggests, all right, that, um, you know, we are able to do this, okay? So now, let's try this. So let's do sudo gitlab hyphen runner, all right, register, okay? So let's try that again. All right, so now it is asking us to, all right, register. So it's sudo gitlab runner hyphen register. So we have to pull the HTTPS, all right? I mean, we're connecting to the gitlab instance, Okay, so that would be gitlab.com, all right, gitlab.com, all right, so we need to enter a register token, okay, so we have to go back to um, our GitLab here, and then we'll go to settings, CI, CD, all right, so let's click on runners, and let's expand that, right, now we can remove these, actually, all right, so let's remove that, I mean, we're trying to change the runner now, so let's remove that, so let's click on new project runner, all right, so here, I'm basically just going to call this Docker, right? I'm going to give it the Docker tag, and then I'm going to say create runner, all right? And here, of course, I'm still going to go with the Linux operating system because, I mean, I'm installing Linux, I'm installing Docker, all right, on my Ubuntu machine, basically, okay? So here, of course, we've done the registration, so let's copy this token, all right? We need that, so let's drop that here. And then here, it's asking us to put a name for a runner, so I'm just going to say Docker. All right, and then I press enter. Now here is asking us to choose an executor, okay? So I'm gonna just basically choose Docker, and then I'm gonna press enter. Now it's asking us the image that we want to use. So what Docker image uh, do we wanna use basically? Now the default is Ruby, all right, image. Of course, we are not gonna use that because I mean, if you use the Ruby image, if you want to build or, or you want to run Docker commands, how do you do that, right? If you choose the Ruby image, so here, we're going to be using the Docker image, all right? So I'm going to say Docker, colon, and then I'm going to use the latest you know, Docker image from Docker Hub 1.2 right here. Now, if you don't know where to get this, of course, you can go over to the, you know, Docker Hub, all right, page. And then here you can search for, you know, Docker images, all right? So here you can search. Um, so here, if I search for Docker, all right, so I'll be able to see the Docker image here. So if I click on this one, 
All right, you can see the image right here. So we're using basically, um, we're using the 272, all right, we're using this one basically, right? Okay, so the latest is 27.2. Well, that's fine, but we are using this one right here. So we're using, you know, 27.12. I mean, that's still uh, very recent. Okay, so I'm going to press enter. And then it says, run a register successfully. Feel free to start it. And if it's running already, blah, blah, blah. And here it's where our configuration, all right, is stored. Okay, so now if I go back and I do my, you know, let's just say cat, for, for example. So I can do sudo, all right, cat. And then I will say, sorry, etc slash gitlab iPhone runner, all right, slash config, all right, dot UML. And then here now, I can see that my URL has been entered, all right, my executor is now Docker. And if you scroll down a bit, you can see that we're using this image, all right, right here. Okay, so now we have registered, all right, this particular runner, all right, using Docker Executor. All right, so let's click on View Runners, all right, and let's see if our runner has indeed been registered. All right, so let's take a look at what you have here. You can see that it's saying that the runner, all right, has never contacted the instance, right? So which means, I mean, it's still not synced, all right, just yet, okay? So let's go back and let's see, all right, what we have. So let's click on that, all right, and then we expand here, all right, so it's still not running, okay? So let's go back to our runner, okay? So we're going to do sudo systemctl, all right, status, all right, gitlab iPhone runner, all right, now we can see that it's not active, okay? Because, I mean, we stopped it earlier, if you remember, okay? So here we're going to do sudo System CTL starts, all right, git lab iPhone. Sorry, git lab iPhone runner. And then we press enter. All right, let's clear our screen. All right, so let's check the status again and let's see. Now the runner is active, all right. So if I refresh this page now, all right, then it should come up as green because now my runner is now what? Is now active. So now you can see. That is saying the runner is online and it was last contacted one minute ago. So now my runner is active. I can start running my job, all right, using this runner. And particularly, I can start executing, all right, Docker commands, all right, on this particular runner. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at how we can actually, you know, do that, basically. Okay. So now in my GitLab CI CD right here, all right, now remember my tag has changed from shell, all right, to Docker. So I need to change this. All right, to Docker, okay? Because I mean, now we're using, all right, this. Now, another interesting thing that we can also do is now that we are using, um, you know, now that we're using, what do you call it? Now that we're using a Docker image, all right, to execute our job, you know, for each of your jobs, you can actually specify the Docker image that you want to use actually, right? So here I can say, well, I want this job to run um, using the node image, basically. Okay, so what do I do? How do I configure that? So I can come here and say, well, my job runs on node, so I can come here to the Docker Hub, and then I can search for a node image, basically. So I can just come here to search and click on node, and then I'll open the node up and then say that maybe my job is running using the node 22 Alpine, for example, right? So I can copy that, and then come here and pull that here and say my job is running using this particular, all right, node. Okay, so that's the image that I want this job to use, basically, all right? And then here, I can come here and I can say, well, these ones should run, you know, on Docker, all right, executor or, or, the, or the instance, all right? So I'm not using any image for this one, so I just want to use the normal Docker image, all right, to build this one, all right? So I can change all of that now because, I mean, the tag that you put here must match, all right, what you have set here. So this is the tag. So if the tag does not match, then your job will not run. Right, so the tag must actually match. Okay, so for this one, we're saying, all right, we're saying the build image, the push image, the deploy image, they should all use, all right, the uh, this executor, all right, to basically run, all right, and then we're not specifying any image for this, so which means these jobs will run using the normal, all right, Docker image. Okay, but this particular one is going to use, all right, the node image to run, which means it's going to pull that node image, and this particular job, this run test job, will actually be built, all right, using, all right, that node image. Okay, so which means even though you specify the Docker image that you want your job to use, you can actually override it, all right, as well. 
right? You can override or write the default image at any time you want, okay? So let's test this out and let's see what happens, all right? Now, this is likely to run into an error, but of course we're learning. So let's try it out and let's see what happens with this. So I'm gonna commit my change, all right? And I'm gonna just say Docker executor, um, you know, add it, okay? And then let's push. And of course that's gonna trigger, all right, our pipeline automatically. All right, so let's go back here, all right, to the build section and let's click on pipelines and let's see what is going on with our, all right, so our job has started already, but of course, like I said, this is likely to fail, but of course, let's watch and let's see what happens, all right, so that we can learn, all right, from what is going on here. So the job is running, all right, so the run test actually passed, right, now that passed, okay, so that's interesting to note. All right, so let's see what will happen to the other ones, right? Let's see. Uh, the other jobs are likely to pass as well. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. The build image is running now. Now let's open the test email, all right, the test job, and let's see actually, you know, what, what happened with it. So now here, remember, we specified, all right, a particular image. So here it says it is running on this executor. Quite all right. Okay, but now look at that. It says Docker image is what is not, which means that this particular job, all right, was built um, using all right the node image, not all right the Docker image. All right, so which means it actually pulled that image, and that image was used all right to execute a pipeline. Is that okay? So that is basically what you have right here. Okay, now of course it looks as if the pipeline passed. Okay, now. The reason I said it was going to fail earlier was because, I mean, it's, um, you know, let's take a look at something, right? Now, if I come here, all right, and look at the pipeline, you know, everything passed, basically. So if I go to the pipeline, all right, and I look at each of the jobs, so if I click on the build image job, all right, now I would see here that it actually used my Docker image, all right? And now the reason why this passed is because I did not run any Docker-specific commands, okay? All of the commands that I'm running here are just basically echo commands, right? Echo commands, basically, okay? And that is why everything passed. Now let's go back to the, all right, let's go back to our jobs. And here, I'm going to run something here. So I'm going to say, okay, so now let's do, Let's just do a simple Docker command, right? So Docker PS, all right? So let's do that, okay? So I'm gonna say Docker PS, all right? So Docker PS, basically, or, and then let's just add something to that and say Docker, all right? So let's say Docker create network, okay? And then what's the network we wanna create? So let's just say, all right, Docker create network app. So which means I want to create a Docker network, right? Now let's push this, all right? And let's see what happens with this particular change. All right, if this will go through or not. All right, so let's commit. Okay, um, so Docker commands added. All right, so let's do git push. Of course, the pipeline is going to be triggered, so let's see what happens. All right, so let's go back to pipelines. All right, and let's see what is likely to go on here. So let's click on the pipeline ID. And now the run test, of course, succeeded, but the build image, let's see if that will go through, all right, without any kind of error, all right? Okay, now look at that. It failed, right? So let's see what happened. Why did the job fail, okay? Now here it says error, connect, all right? It cannot connect to the Docker, all right, socket, and all of that, which means no host, which means it wasn't able, all right, to connect to our Docker engine. You know, we had to install a Docker, all right, we had to, we had to install Docker, all right, on our system, basically, right? So what you have here basically is telling you that, well, these Docker commands that you want me to run, I can actually connect to the Docker daemon, so I can't execute those commands. So what do we do? How do we fix this in the next video? We'll see exactly how to fix this issue, all right, and what to do, all right, when we encounter errors like this. Is that okay? So thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you, all right, in the next video.